The Nagant pistol, mainly known for being one of Hunt Showdown's starting pistols and also being one of the worst guns in the game. Well, I decided to put it to the test and see just how bad it really is. So, I only played the Nagant pistol for an entire prestige. Now, there are a few rules to this challenge. The first one being I am only allowed to use the Nagant pistol, although I am not limited to kills with only the Nagant pistol. I am allowed to whip out my knife in necessary situations, however I cannot purposefully run other guns other than the Nagant pistol. This pistol will be both my primary and my secondary weapon, not me running the Nagant pistol as my secondary while I play Mosin. This is also not including the officer variation. The one caveat being I am allowed to switch my gun out in a match if I am low on ammo. Not necessarily completely empty for strategy reasons because it would suck to hold onto a gun with 4 bullets and be in a situation where I run out of ammo and no longer be in a scenario where I can swap my gun out. Also, life or death swaps are allowed, however this only happened once. I will first give a brief review and rating of my experience with the gun and then I will show you my best match. Any other good games will be thrown into a separate video so as to not make this video too long. So, the M1895 Nagant Revolver. Based on this real world counterpart, has some strengths and many weaknesses. There being more weaknesses in which I think outweigh the strengths. Which probably explains why you don't see it too often in game. I'd first like to touch on the strengths. Now, before moving forward, I just want to say that me saying there are more downsides than upsides doesn't mean I think this gun is trash. It has its many uses, however, it isn't really a viable option when in 5-6 to six star against players only using long ammo. Furthermore, the first strength I'd like to say this gun has is its versatility. The silencer variation pretty much carried this playthrough. It allows me to kill AI, destroy dog cages, while also allowing me to remain silent and not alert any distant hunters. On top of that, being able to snack some free kills without revealing my location is another great upside. On top of that, it has some ammo variations which improve user experience with this gun substantially. I cannot imagine attempting this challenge without special ammo. It was hard enough with it, I cannot fathom going without it. Poison ammo obviously being great, especially on the silencer variant as it allows you to one-shot all AI in the game except for boss targets, wild targets, and meat heads, as well as being able to kill players in one hit with a headshot making it a top tier choice for a versatile sidearm. However, I found myself mainly using the high velocity special ammo for PvP reasons. It still does all of the above except for one-shotting emulators. Next, I don't think I can call this a strength, but rather just an upside. I love the Nagant Precision. Matter of fact, before this challenge, it was my favorite gun. It's moved down to my third favorite after playing it so much, but that doesn't change the fact that this gun feels so good to hold and use. The sway is almost non-existent. It has almost no recoil. The reset between shots is pristine, requiring almost no adjustment. This thing feels like a head clicker, especially with the high velocity rounds. Of course, this is just a personal choice. Next, it's Dundam ammo. While better to have than the normal ammo, making it an upside still. But since it only causes light bleeding and not intense bleeding like medium ammo dum dum, I feel it's rather lackluster. As for the weaknesses, with high velocity rounds, it has a 490 meter per second muzzle velocity, but without it, it's only 330, which I personally don't like going below 400. The silencer is even lower at 250. This can make the gun challenging to use beyond 40 meters, but since you can run high velocity, this really isn't an issue. Next, the thing that irks me the most is the effective range. 74 meters is so bad. I rarely get soft headshots in this game, but that's because I usually use guns that are actually good. While the Nagant Precision feels good to use, has decent muzzle velocity with high velocity rounds, and basically no sway or recoil, this all makes it so easy to hit headshots past 74 meters, and this happened a lot. The effective range is so low that the iron sights are good up to 74 meters, and zooming in is completely unnecessary, so I don't know why the Deadeye variant even exists. Since the damage on the gun is also trash, I was basically going for a headshot on every bullet I shot. I've never felt more frustration in my life than this clip right here. Whee! Out of range headshots! Fuck! He should have died! One f oh, they only have 150 health by the way. I literally should have killed him. 
God, this game is fucking ass. Or these guns are just shit. Like now, I knew it wasn't going to one top at that range, which is why I knew to go for the second shot immediately. But another huge downside is that it's compact ammo, which means it comes with all of compact ammo's downsides, including the 20 meter damage drop off, which means that my second bullet doesn't kill him here, letting him escape with four health. While on the topic of compact ammo, obviously this means this gun has terrible penetration. So basically having no penetration for an entire prestige was also rather annoying because people were basically always safe against me even if they had a wooden wall. Even if they added FMJ to this gun, I probably wouldn't run it still as I still prefer the higher muzzle velocity and anything under 300 such as a Scott Field and the new army I basically cannot use. So I don't see these two main problems being fixed without just a buff to the gun. Another downside obviously is the fact that I have like no closer in option for the entire Entire challenge. I just have two very weak and slow shooting guns which cause me to play very passively, unless of course I have fanning. In that case, the fun increases substantially. Although the fanning on this gun is pretty mid-tier and there are better options, so I see no reason to use this gun if you want to run fanning unless you just want a silencer too. All in all, I would give this gun a 4 out of 10. It's pretty bad and is definitely one of the lower mid-tier guns, but I don't think it's the worst gun in the game because it has so many uses outside of PvP. Before I show you my best match, I just thought I'd share that this was live stream on Twitch. Please stop by and say hi, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video.
Dude, these are all different people. I thought she was the fucking one in the building. They have the same skin. So there's actually two teams. I thought, because I know... Oh. I need to get bullets. Cause I know she was- I saw her done on the ground earlier and I saw she- her body disappeared. It's not the same cane. 